our lives. And by God the Holy Spirit, I pray that that will be so now. In our Savior's name we pray. Amen. And amen. We're turning this morning, please, to the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter number 61, please. The prophecy of Isaiah, chapter number 61. Isaiah, chapter 61, please. The words are part of the words we're going to read. The Lord Jesus in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, quoted these words. But he didn't quote them all. He closed the book at a certain point. But we're not going to just tell you the reason why or anything like that because the Lord doesn't want me to do that, but I just want to just say that. And and in, in Isaiah 61, verse 1, we read, The Spirit of the Lord, God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. Ending there, and we know that the Lord will bless those verses to our hearts this morning. It was the early part of the 17th century when Germany was wreaked with wars and with famines and with pestilences. The wars and the famines and the pestilence left nothing but death and destruction in their wake. It is said to be the worst period that Germany had ever known. And during those awful 50 years in the city of Eilenburg, there was a young missionary who served the Lord whose name was Martin Rincart. And through those awful, tragic years, Martin Rincart served the Lord faithfully. He served the Lord through the most terrible, traumatic, depressing times. It is recorded that Martin Rincart, on many of occasions, conducted over 50 funerals a day. And some of those funerals were members of his own family. A number of occasions, one occasion especially, Martin Rincart became so spiritually depressed He became so spiritually weakened. He became so spiritually heavy. He became so spiritually bewildered. He felt like the man described in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. You see, Proverbs 12, verse 25 says, Heaviness in the heart of man will maketh him stoop. And I wonder here this morning, is there any person here and you're spiritually bewildered this morning? You're spiritually depressed. You're spiritually weary. This morning, I want to just let you know, well, it's not me, it's the Lord. There's no greater burden that a child of God can bear than the burden of spiritual heaviness. Robert Murray McShane, in his biography that I read many, many years ago, said there was one other occasion in his life he remembers going into the study to prepare. 
He went in with great zeal to meet with God, but he was met with spiritual heaviness. He says, My heart was plagued with heaviness and coldness that I became spiritually dead, as it were. The heaviness and the coldness brought upon a deadness upon my spirit. Uh, McShane says, I couldn't even lift my head. I couldn't even settle my mind to think. I wonder this morning, is there anybody like that? I wonder this morning, do you know what it is to be under the heaviness of spirit, spiritual heaviness this morning? But there's one verse the Lord brought to Robert Murray McShane in his dark, dark time, and it was the same verse that the Lord brought to Martin Rinkart in his dark, dark time, and it was Psalm 34, verse 18, where it says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and he saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. And that word contrite in the Hebrew means to be crushed beyond recognition, to be crushed almost into a powder. And you know, when we get so spiritually heavy this morning, not only does life seem out of control, but when we go through that spiritual time where our spirits are heavy and depressed, sometimes we almost believe God is out of control. And I wonder this morning, is there someone here? And you're going through this period, and you don't know what's wrong with you this morning, but listen, I'll tell you what's wrong with you this morning because the Lord has told me to tell you you're going through what period which is known the period of spiritual heaviness. Spiritual heaviness. And when you're going through the period of spiritual heaviness, listen, it's hard to pray. It's difficult to read God's Word. And when you're going through that period of spiritual heaviness, listen, I can tell you that's when the devil can wreak havoc with your faith. And you know, it takes very little for the devil to bring the spirit of heaviness upon you. Well, as I poured my heart out before the Lord this week, opening my heart to Him for His message for this morning, Suddenly, out of the blue, the Lord brought this text to my heart. And it's found in verse number 3. And here's the text this morning. It's the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And sometimes, child of God, we can get so spiritually disorientated that we don't know what to do or where to turn. But the Lord this morning wants to minister to all of our hearts, myself included, on this very text this morning. And there's three things the Lord wants you to see. First of all, He wants us to focus on our holy garment of praise. You know, oftentimes we'll talk about spiritual warfare. And oftentimes we'll hear great sermons preached on the breastplate of righteousness. We'll hear great messages preached on the shield of faith. And we'll hear great messages preached on the helmet of salvation. And we'll hear great messages preached on the armor of God. But you don't hear too many uh, sermons preached on the garment of praise. Because the garment of praise this morning is something that every believer ought to wear all the time all the time, not just in the good times, not just when life is going well, not just in the pleasurable times and the prosperous times, but we're to wear the garment of praise all the time. What does Psalm 34 verse 1 say? I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall be continually in my mouth, continually. Tell me something this morning, child of God. Are you wearing the garment of praise? Now listen. Sometimes we are out of balance. What do you mean, George, we're out of balance? Sometimes, you know, brother and sister, this morning, we're so out of balance, this is why we find ourselves 
spiritually heavy. You know, sometimes, child of God, we get so we get so tied up in prayer that we forget to praise. There's people and they're tied up in prayer, but they're but their own praise. Ah, then there's other people and they're tied up in praise, but there's no prayer. And you know, child of God, sometimes when we go wrong, we're out of balance. Because I can tell you now, prayer and praise go together. And our holy garment of praise, listen, we need to be wearing it every day. About, oh, six weeks ago, Tracy and me were walking up Newcastle Street. It was a powerful day. It was that good. You know, we met, I, I thought, actually we thought we were walking up Kilkeel. I met more people at Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle that day in Newcastle. was beyond ordinary. And it was that good we even met Gordon Bell wearing shorts. But that's another, that's another subject for another time. But as Tracy and me were walking up this street, and Tracy, of course, she's away into Wadsworth, and I wasn't going to go in there, but I met this lady who I knew from the plum right days, and she professes to be a believer. Now, I'm not doubting the fact she is, but, but she used to come into plum right to me, and you know what her nickname was? Miserable Minnie. Every time you met her, ah, the world was falling down. So anyway, this Saturday when we were in, in Newcastle, who come walking down the street only? Well, I don't know what her real name is, but miserable man. And I says, dear, long time no see. It's not a powerful day. You know what she says to me? She says, that's a day to be at home with a feet up. Says, I aware that we a day like that, you've all winter to sit at home with your feet up there. I says that's a powerful day. Oh, I suppose it is. Ah, you know, him and me fell out this morning. He says, What do you mean? I said to him, Do you want to come to Newcastle a day for our own? And he turned around and he said, No. And I felt like saying, no wonder. And you know what it did? I, said, I got the whole life story. Do you know what it did? And he says, no. I got into the car and I was raging. And I was raging till I got to the length of Newcastle when the worst happened. And he says, the worst happened? What happened? You had a flat wheel or something? No. When I got to the length of Newcastle, she said, I realized I forgot to put my teeth in. <laughs> well, he says, well, could be worse, I says, I'm sure you can still manage a 99. Well, do you know, wait a tie. There's a whole lot of Christians like her. All miserable. You know, someone, you meet so many miserable Christians, you know. And you know, child of God, wait till I tell you something. When you get cold, in the wintertime, what do you do? You put a jumper on you, don't you? Put a jumper on you. Any right-thinking person will put a jumper on them. Or if it's raining, what do you do? You put a coat on you. Well, if you're sensible, you'll put a coat on you. But you know, child of God, when we get so spiritually heavy at times, and when our heads get filled with doubt, and life comes crowding round with uh, cares and worries. Do you know what the Lord wants you and me to put on us? Not a coat or a pullover. He wants us to put on the garment of praise. God has given you and I this morning a garment of praise to wear. He has given us the garment of praise. What for? For the spirit of Heaviness. Do you know, child of God, this morning, praise is like a magnifying glass. It is. 
like a magnifying glass because it breaks God out way and out we see God more than our cares and on our worries. I hear people say, I'm having a good day. I'm having a good day, so I'll praise the Lord. Wrong. Wrong. We're to praise the Lord not only in the good days. We're to praise the Lord this morning in our bad days. Here's a wee lesson for you, child of God. Praise. Praise is one of the great spiritual problem solvers. Why? Because praise gets our eyes of our griefs. And praise gets our eyes upon God. What did the psalmist say in Psalm 119, verse 164? Seven times a day do I praise thee. Get that bit. Seven times a day do I praise thee because thy righteous judgments. You know, why are we to wear the garment of praise? You know why? If you look closely this morning at the garment of praise, every thread speaks of Christ. Every stitch speaks of Christ. The garment of praise is Christ right from the very top to the very bottom. The garment of praise. Tell me something this morning, child of God. Are you wearing the garment of praise? Let's, let's put this real this morning. Fanny Crosby. Fanny Crosby was a hymn writer. And she wrote many hymns. She was, she was blinded from a child. And I don't think she ever remembered seeing her parents' face. And if she had any reason to moan and to groan and to give off, it would have been Fanny Crosby. But no, she wasn't going to let her life get her down. What did you say? What did you say? If you, rem- if you know the words, you repeat them after me. This is my story. This is my song. What's the next line? Praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, child of God, you think of Paul and Silas in the prison with their backs red raw and they're whipped and their feet and their hands are in stocks. Friend, what do you do? You hear them praying and praising the Lord. I'm sure the rest of the prisoners, when they hear them, they're the same, they will know. Do you hear them clowns down there? Do you hear them? I can tell you now, child of God, listen, listen, don't let your life, here's a lesson for you now, don't let your life, don't let life, that's it more, 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 more like it. Don't let life affect your praise. Will you get that this morning? Don't let life affect your praise. Let praise affect your life. Let praise affect your life. And you think of the attributes. Oh, you praise him for his attributes. Praise him for his person. Friend, how great is our God unworthy to be praised. Praise Him this morning for His power. Praise Him this morning for His provisions. Praise Him this morning for His grace. Praise Him this morning for His guidance. Oh, child of God, if we put on the holy garment of praise, I'll tell you, it's the first thing that'll soon lift the spirit of heaviness. Don't let life. Listen to me. Listen to the Lord. Never mind me. Listen to the Lord. Don't let life affect your praise. Let praise affect your life, for it will. You know, I hear the people saying, you know what I need? I need a coffee break. I need a tea break. Then you get the, the worldly, you get the worldly, the unsaved. I need a smoke break. Everybody needs breaks. Coffee break, tea break. Do you know what we all need at times? A praise break. A time where we get alone with the Lord when our spirits are heavy and get alone with Him and say, Lord, I'm going through a tough time here, but I'm going to praise you. I praise you for what you are. I praise you for what you're doing. And in spite of what I'm going through, Lord, I'm going to praise you. That's putting on the garment of praise. Then the Lord wants me to look at something else this morning. Ah, oh, friend, you can the holy garment of praise. You could praise him for his attributes. His acts. Think of Calvary this morning. Think of the resurrection this morning. Think of the blessings upon you. Oh, friend, we love that hymn. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, my blessed Redeemer. And then if you take a wee look at verse number three, the Lord wants to point this out to you this morning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Our holy garment of praise, but here's our heavy grief of pain this morning. Where does the spirit of heaviness come from? You know where it comes from? It comes from Satan. It comes from the devil. 
Listen, you never hear the devil or Satan mentioned from the pulpit because you think you're going charismatic. If you do, I'm not going charismatic. I preach the truth. Where does it come from? It comes from Satan. It comes from the devil this morning because Satan will do everything he can to oppose your walk with God. He will. And spiritual infliction by the enemy will bring it upon you. You know the first thing, the first three things, the first three things the spirit of heaviness will quench, it'll quench your faith. It'll quench your faithfulness. It'll quench your fruit burn. You know why? Because it robs you of your joy. You've been robbed of your joy this morning. Have you let the devil rob you of your joy? Have you let this morning Satan rob you of your, of your vision, of your hope? Is this you this morning, child of God? You are discouraged, you are deflated, you are disillusioned. You know, we'll tell you I know all about it. Pastor Trevor Gillanders, who's the minister of Abbott's Cross Congregational, rang me about, about three or four weeks ago. And he and I were open and were honest about one another. I'm sorry, about our ministry. And he says, George, tell me this. Do you ever feel this days? You feel that's it. You feel like giving up. You feel you can't go on. You go into the study, you can't pray, you can't even think straight. He says, Trevor, am I hearing you right? He says, I'm only been honest. He says, Trevor, the reason why I'm asking you, am I hearing you right? Because there's many times I feel the same way. That the spirit of heaviness comes over us. He says, do you know where that comes from, George? He says, tell me, Trevor. He says, I believe, he says. There's waves of demonic powers comes over the servants of God. You know something? I believe it too. And that's why men like me covet your prayers. Because let me tell you, the devil's real. Satan's real. Demons are real. And you, and I know you are, thank God, bless you for it, you are upholding me in prayer. Because the servants of God, we do get it at times. And life may seem difficult, but do you know what I have found? Pray. Praise is the power that lifts you above the blackness of heaviness. You know what praise does? Praise ushers in light and life into our circumstances. It's the ultimate act of faith to praise him. It was the ultimate act of faith for Paul and Silas. A young pastor was so delusioned. He was only, it was his first, time, first pastor. He was so disillusioned with himself and so discouraged in himself he was about to hand in his notice when one of the elders of the church visited him. The elder knew right away there was something wrong, and he says, Pastor, what is it? He says, I just want to lay down and die. The elder couldn't believe it. He says, you know, I'm no good. My ministry doesn't mean anything to anybody. And the elder brought him round into the sitting room and he says, wait till I tell you what I'm here for. I'm here to thank you for coming to our church. He says, you're the only one out of nine men that we approached that would come. You started your pastorate in our church 18 months ago, or slightly under 18 months, and all we had was 15 people in the meeting. And now we're sitting with 125, and now we have still people coming. And you know, we never thought we would see the day when our church would be in fire again. And he says, Pastor, it's because God is using you and it's because God is blessing your ministry that you're going through this. Let us kneel together, said the elder. Oh, wise elder he was. Let's kneel together. And he got him down 
and friends, they got, they got down together and they knelt together. And this microphone, the devil's given me a hard time over this microphone. And they got down together and they prayed together and the elder put the arms around him and says, Lord, I praise you for sending this young man. I thank you, Lord, for the day he come. And I thank you, Lord, for the very work that he's doing and how he's lifted it out of, the, out, our wee fellowship, out of the pit of despondency and set us on fire for you. And slowly but surely, slowly but surely, the spirit of heaviness from that young pastor arose. And he went on to serve the Lord there for 23 years. And I want you to notice something else, child. Listen, listen, child of God. You see the spirit of heaviness? Let me tell you, it's real. Because Satan's real. And demons are, are real. And I'll tell you, friend, it's real. It's real. And if you're feeling this morning, don't you think you're the only one? There's times I go through it. There's times every one of us goes through it. And you're not alone. And that's why we need to be praying for one another. Praying for one another. And then I want you to notice finally, look, look, look at this because we miss this bit. We miss this bit. It says here, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now here's the last wee bit. And I'm going to call this our heavenly glow of promotion. For this is what it is. Now listen, you ready for it? Read it. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. That He might be glorified. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. You know, child of God, we have every reason to praise God for. We heard the other Lord's Day morning, Philippians 4, verse 4, where the Lord taught us that we are to rejoice in the Lord always, even when it's not even. We're to still rejoice. And you know, the, the prophet says here, that he, he says here, that you may, they may be called the trees of righteousness. Listen, child of God, that's not our righteousness, that's His righteousness. That the world unclean, ungodly, outside these four walls will take notice and will look at you and will look at me and see that we are different that we are real, that we are trees, not of our own righteousness, but we will be trees of His righteousness. What did the Lord Jesus say? Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Do you know if there's ever a day, child of God, if there's ever a day that we need to be flourishing in righteousness, in Christ's righteousness. Sure, it's the day in which we're living in, isn't it? It's the day in which we're living in. And then it says here, here's us the testimony of, of, of our heavenly glow. And you know, child of God, this morning, look at it, it says here that you may be called the planting of the Lord. That means when people see us, they know we belong to the Lord. But here's the task of our heavenly, our, heaven, our, 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 our heavenly glow, that He might be glorified. That He might be glorified. Now listen, child of God. This is not a sermon. This is a message from God to your heart and to my heart. Now here's the big question. What are we going to do with it? I know maybe somebody has hurt you. And somebody said something about you. Or life at this moment isn't good. Here's what the Lord's asking you to do this morning. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And what you'll find what you'll find through the avenue of praise, both the physical and the spiritual heaviness will be conquered. I'm just finished. The Lord has brought a wee thought to my mind there. Remember in Second Chronicles chapter 20, 
the enemies were all around the, the Lord's people. And you remember what the Lord said to Jehoshaphat? He says, now let's go and face the enemy. What did he say? I'll tell you what he didn't say. He didn't say, send out first the men with the swords. No. He didn't say, send out first the men with the shields. No. He didn't say, send out the men with the bows and arrows. No. You know what he said? God said, send out the singers first. The singers. Send out the choir first. And you know what you'll read? The moment when the singers began to sing, the enemies of the Lord began to disintegrate. Child of God, let's put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and then we will know true victory through our troubles and through our trials and through our cares. Because every step and every thread of the garment of praise, remember, is Christ. Christ. And may God, by His grace, because we need it, and God, by His Holy Spirit, help us daily to wear the garment of praise for the Spirit.